everyone and happy holidays and happy new years. To kick off the new year, I'm doing my top 10 Funko Pops as well as my honorable favorites and then my favorite mystery minis. To start off, I'm gonna do my honorable mentions and of course I have to start with the holographic Princess Leia and R2-D2 two pack. This I believe was from New York Comic Con this was a must-have for me because I thought it was a beautiful way in tribute for the late Carrie Fisher. This is from her iconic scene, our first introduction to Princess Leia, when Luke and Obi-Wan get the hologram from R2-D2 of her saying, Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Next honorable mention is the first of my, I believe, three Disney honorable mentions. This is the Evil Queen, or Grimhild, from Snow White. This is her in her old hag disguise when she gives the poison apple to Snow White. This pop is from the Snow White 80th Anniversary Collection. I got this at Funko HQ. What I really like what they've been doing about the Disney villains is they've been doing like a full molded face. Um, where like they have like the nose, they have the eyebrows, they have the wrinkles, they have, they're kind of like deviating from like the typical Funko head shape. They're doing mouths, they're doing all these amazing details. And I think for something like the animated characters in Disney, particularly the villains, wouldn't be able to fully capture like their evilness if you didn't do it this way with a fully molded face. My second Disney honorable mention is this Hot Topic exclusive Flocked Beast from the live action Beauty and the Beast. Um, I thought they did an amazing job. I think they did a real improvement on the design of Beast. Um, I like his little fangs and how his nose isn't quite so large and exaggerated. I like his horns. I love that they did it flocked. I think that was a perfect way to show the beast. Um, I love all the detail in his coat and his ruffles, uh, his individual little claws, his tail. I think they just did an amazing job. Um, my last Disney honorable mention is this Aurora in her blue dress. This is the Chase. Um, I was so excited when I saw that they were coming out with her blue dress, finally. Um, it drives me insane that they only make anything Aurora in her pink dress because um, in the original movie um, she actually only wears the pink dress for three seconds in the entire film. Officially the Disney company says it's because they think too many people would confuse you know Aurora with her like you know blonde hair and blue dress with Cinderella but that's only because they messed up on the colors of Cinderella when they modernized her. If you watch the original version of Cinderella, she has strawberry blonde hair, not yellow hair, and her dress is silver with just hints of icy blue. Um, and then they've made Aurora, instead of having this pale white blonde hair, almost kind of like Malfoy white blonde hair, instead they've also given her this really in-your-face yellow hair. Um, so of course their kids are going to, you know confuse them because they've taken these two original princesses that had completely different hair colors, completely different dress colors, and they've given them the same yellow hair and the same blue dress. So now, long story short, I'm really, really happy to finally have her in her blue dress. Now we're going into my Harry Potter honorable mentions. This is the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Luna Lovegood with her Spectre specs and her kind of you know, iconic Luna outfit. Um, the only reason that this pop is not in my top 10 is because all of the um, available pops they had at my Hot Topic all had paint mishaps. Um, as you can see on her jacket, she has these black splotches on her, which thankfully they kind of look like, like hearts or something, so you can kind of pretend like they're supposed to be there. But when you look at the um, art on the box, it's clearly not supposed to be there. She also has a small speck on her forehead. Um, and every single Luna they had in my Hot Topic 
had a rough paint job. This had the best paint job of all of them. So really glad to have her. I love her. She looks amazing. But with the shoddy paint job, I can't put her in the top 10. My second Harry Potter honorable mention is this Hot Topic exclusive Remus Lupin as a werewolf or in his werewolf form. Um, I love this pop. I love how they did the bright lime green kind of glowing eyes instead of the traditional black pop eyes. I love the 3D sculpted details of the hairs on, on his body, on his claws, his hands, his arms, his ears. The sculpt is just absolutely amazing on this pop. The only reason this isn't in my top 10 is because they didn't have a flocked or glow in the dark version. He is one of my favorite pops that I've gotten this year. And Remus Lupin is my favorite Harry Potter character and one of my favorite characters of all time. So I had to include him as an honorable mention. The final honorable mention is my Ginny Weasley Quidditch Pops. Um, these were Barnes & Noble exclusives. I was really excited because like a lot of people, I love the character of Ginny. She was such a badass. She you know, didn't take crap from no one. She's amazing at Quidditch. Um, and they didn't really do her justice in her first pop, which they took forever to even make a Ginny pop. And the first pop they made was real generic and just didn't really show the badass that she is. And so when they came out this pop, I knew I had to get it. And then the other one I have, I was lucky enough during the last Funko Photo Day challenge in October to be one of the winners. And I was given this prototype of Quidditch Ginny. And I will treasure her always. I've All right, let's start off with number 10. This is my New York Comic Con Glow in the Dark Balrog. Um, this was a really hard pot for me to get. Uh, um, the only reason he is not higher in my list is because the glow that he supposedly has is barely there. Um, I've tried with black lights. I've tried with just holding a light on him for a long time and then turning all the lights off and he just doesn't have that much of a glow. I've seen pictures on social media of him with like some insane intense glow, but either I got a dud or they photoshopped it because there's no way mine has, it, it barely even glows. You couldn't even pick it up on a camera. Um, so that's why he's number 10 and isn't higher up. But. All right, number nine is this San Diego Comic-Con two pack of Strider and Arwen. This is from Barnes & Noble. The reason these are number nine and not higher um, is because they just, I mean, they are amazing and they've got pretty good detail, but it's not like they're in like, you know, some amazing pose or really high detail. Um, I also think it's weird that in the box, the name of it is Aragorn and Erwin, um, but in this part of the story, both in the books and the movies of the Fellowship of the Ring, we don't know him as Aragorn yet. We only know him as Strider, um, so I think it's kind of weird that they wouldn't put Strider and they put Aragorn instead. Um, other than that, I really like these pops. I love how they did Arwen. She looks amazing. This is the scene where she is with Frodo. He's sick because he stupidly put on the ring and got stabbed by a ring wraith because he was too stupid to realize that they could still see him with the ring. Um, and she's riding on her horse to try to get him to Elrond to be cured. And the ring wraiths are chasing her. That's why she has a cut on her cheek. She has her sword. Um, I really hope someday they make a pop ride of her on her horse with like a little sickly Frodo. Um, and she looks number eight is my World War II Captain America. This was from uh, Captain America, the first Avenger. Um, this is a scene where he is in Germany and he just heard that Bucky has been captured and held prisoner. So he's suiting up with a suit, but he's got the leather jacket and pants on top. And then he's got his original shield with all the scratches on it. This is the shield he used when he was one of the dancers. He's got his old fashioned style helmet with the A and he's got his goggles on. The goggles are 3D and have like a clear plastic and they look amazing. Um, I was actually lucky enough to get him in person at Emerald City Comic Con. Um, it was the first Comic Con I ever went to and I had a blast. 
I met loads of amazing people. I cosplayed for the first time and I got to get my very first pop at a convention in person. And what better pop to get than my favorite superhero, Captain America. All right, number seven. This is my Poe Dameron in X-Wing pop ride. This is from the Last Jedi box for um, Funko's uh, Smuggler's Bounty subscription box. Um, I love Poe Dameron. He is my favorite of the new Star Wars characters and he's one of my favorite Star Wars characters of all time. I think he is hilarious. I love a smart ass. He is an amazing pilot. I think he's a really good friend. I think he's a really good like, you know, resistance member and he is very passionate and very loyal and I think he'll make a good leader one day. Um, and then of course, what's so cool, it's, it's in his X-Wing. This is black one because Poe is black leader. And you can see in the back, he's got his little BB-8 and just the detail on this is amazing. It's suspended on like clear plastic so it looks like it's flying. They've got the X-Wings, they've got, you know, the engine and the blasters. It's just amazing. The only thing I would change is I would make the nose come out a little bit longer because X-Wings have a very long nose. And I get it, they probably just had to kind of keep it to a certain scale to be able to fit in their box so that they didn't, wouldn't have to make like a custom size box or something. Uh, but if the nose had just been a little bit longer, I think it would have looked a little bit better because it would have looked a little bit more to the true like proportions of an X-Wing. But other than that, this pop is amazing and I love it. Number six is my six inch Akami. Again, this was another San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. San Diego Comic-Con this year really wiped me out. I think I got like 10 different pops from the wave in that comic-con um i believe this was a hot topic exclusive this is high on my list because i've never seen a paint job so stunning on a pop they just went above and beyond it's all metallic with just a little bit of a matte beige for the tip of the beak and mouth um it's got these beautiful silver metallic horns it's got metallic like coppery rose gold on the tips of its wings and its tips of its feathers. It's got like lilac and lavender and periwinkle and aqua and peacock blue and it's just all these amazing colors just effortlessly blended kind of like an oil slick when you get to the body. The wings are just so delicate and so well done. The texture of the scales and the feathers is just superb this is like the best sculpt the best paint job i don't think i've ever seen such a beautiful pop the colors are just to die for i think even if you weren't a harry potter fan i think people still wanted this pop and still bought this pop because it's just so unbelievably gorgeous and it's definitely one of my favorite pieces which is why it's number six Number five is this Bogart as Snape pop. I was completely just, just amazed that they made this pop. This is one of those obscure characters, obscure scenes, small, like you would never think they would ever make this as a pop. Yet they did it and they did it in such high detail it's just, it's amazing. If you don't know Harry Potter, this is from The Prisoner of Azkaban, where Professor Lupin is teaching them about Bogarts in Defense Against the Dark Arts. For this particular scene, it's Neville Longbottom's turn to face the Bogart, and as everybody knows, Neville is terrified of Professor Snape, who has like this cruel satisfaction in like torturing Neville like every day of his life at Hogwarts. So, and Remus knows this, and of course, Remus hates Snivellus. So, Remus tells Neville to picture Snape in Neville's grandmother's clothes, which Neville's grandmother wears ridiculous outfits, just atrocious, covered in dead animals. Um, and so, he pictures Snape in his grandmother's clothes, and we just get this fantastic scene of, you know, scary, stoic, 
Severus Snape dressed in the most ridiculous outfit you can imagine. In the movies with Alan Rickman, it was just, it was one of my favorite scenes. And they went all out to just really capture that image in this pop. With the vulture on the hat, the two stuffed cats, one cat has a stuffed mouse in its mouth. And I think there's like, I don't even know how many spiders, but I know that all together, there are like 13 animals on this one outfit. It's just, and it's just amazing. And all of them are in pop um, form. So they all have like the squarish heads and the pop eyes, every single one of them. Even the spiders kind of have like squarish little bodies. Just the attention to detail is just out of this world. This is one of my favorite pops and I'm just, just, it's just unbelievable that they even made this. And I can't wait to see what other obscure moment from Harry Potter that they bring out. I'm just, this is just amazing. Number four is this Harry Potter on his broom. Um, again, this was another Barnes & Noble exclusive from San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, thing that they, they made a suspended on broom flying Harry Potter with the snitch, with his hair, like, you know, tousled back from the wind, his robes, fluttering behind him. It just looks amazing and it opens up so many possibilities for what they could do with more Quidditch characters. I know they've already announced and I think they're coming out next week, the first week of January, um, Ginny and Ron in their Quidditch uniforms on their brooms. Um, that's amazing. Um, I would really want all of the different um, Quidditch team characters from, just to have like a Quidditch player from every team and even multiple characters from every team so we could have like the setup of a little Quidditch game I think would just be out of this world incredible. There's so many Harry variants that you could do like you could do from the Sorcerer Philosopher's Stone where Coral is jinxing him jinxing his broom and he's dangling from his broom or when he's surfing on his broom to try to catch the snitch or what for the first time or when he and Draco are being chased by the bludger that Dobby has um, bewitched. Harry during the Prisoner of Azkaban comes face to face with all these Dementors in the middle of the Quidditch game and he could do Victor Crumb, they could do the World Cup, they could do... i be so excited to think about everything that they could make. Number three is my Maleficence with Flames. These were Hot Topic exclusives. These were another really hard pot for me to get this year. Um, for some reason, it seemed like my barn, or my Hot Topic was like the last one in the country to get them. I know people on the East Coast got them like almost two months before we did. I know like Portland and Albany and Salem and Seattle got them several weeks before we did here in Eugene. One day, right as class got out, I get a message saying, Hey Margo, we've got them in. We only have a couple. We only have two chases. You better get here quick so you can get them. So I jumped in my car, raced over there, and by some miracle, no one had picked them up yet. And then I got one chase and one regular, which the regular is the one with the translucent flame so you can see through them and they just oh they look really cool especially with a light on the other side and then the chase is the opaque one which the opaqueness is the glow in the dark pigment that's been mixed in to the vinyl and it just looks amazing it has an amazing glow it is one of my pops with the best glow i've ever seen my number two in my top 10 funko pops of 2017 is steve harrington with his signature nail studded bat from season one of Stranger Things. This was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive um, from series one of Stranger Things Pops. I was so excited to get this. I love Steve and I love Steve right from the beginning. And I was just, this was like the perfect way to capture him. Like, you know, all bloodied up and beaten up from his brawl with Jonathan, you know, angrily holding his bat with the nails ready to just kick ass kill some demigorgon monsters with his amazing hair they perfectly captured his hair it they just did an amazing job 
The paint job is amazing. His hair sculpt is amazing. The bat sculpt is amazing. And the paint, I wondered how they were going to like, you know, make sure they got all the little nails and did a good paint job on the bat, but they did an amazing job. Um, when I first, so this was like the first in a wave of other characters and the first of the exclusives. Um, but now that season two has come out and Steve is even better than he was in season one, and I think everybody now finally sees how amazing Steve is and they've kind of finally just seen what he's capable of, that he really is amazing. Um, I think a lot of people from season one didn't like him even after he kind of redeemed himself against like, you know, fighting with the Demogorgon. I know a lot of my family didn't, still didn't like him until season two. Um, so anyway, so since season two came out, after this pop came out, now suddenly everybody wants this pop. And so like the value has just spiked and he's definitely earned his number two spot for the best pops of 2017. And finally, here we are at number one, my personal favorite and I think the best pop of 2017. This is the Super Size Maleficent. This was a Disney Treasures exclusive from their October Haunted Forest box. Um, it is the, I mean, the detail is just fantastic. Again, like um, Lupin, the werewolf's eyes, they did it like this glowing lime green. They did the mint in the ridges of her horns and the ridge going down the middle of her forehead. She's perfectly chiseled. Her wings look amazing. They've got the purple in her neck and underbelly. Her claws look fantastic. They did a good job with the details in the back with her like spikes and her tail. And I just like how glossy she looks. The In the original animation for Sleeping Beauty, she didn't have scales like most dragons do. She was perfectly smooth, like this really glossy leather hide. And they just, they just captured it just perfectly. It's amazing. It is the perfect pop to have with my Aurora and my transitioning into a dragon Maleficent. It's just like the perfect centerpiece for my Maleficent collection. It really deserved the number one pop this year. Um, I'm really excited to see what Disney Treasures is going to come with, up with in the future because to be honest, the first several boxes, there wasn't a whole lot in it that I was excited about. Most of the time, I was more excited about the mystery mini or the Dorbs ride versus the actual pop, which for me is crazy because I've never liked Dorbs. So for me to be excited about a Dorbs ride was really weird. Um, so I hope that they have better pops in the future, but this, this one pop made the entire six month subscription easily worth it for me it's just amazing and i'm so glad she's mine so that's it that's my top 10. now let's see what mystery minis i thought were the best for 2017. i think everyone can agree that the series 2 harry potter mystery minis were by far the best mystery mini series of 2017. they were so detailed there were so many characters they did all the amazing magical creatures. The exclusives were amazing and were really hard to get, which really kind of keeps the hunt and value of Pops and Funko products alive. Uh, don't get me wrong, there were, was, there was some really frustrating moments with this series. Um, I'm not even close to complete. Um, the biggest reason was the ratios were horrible. I think as much as this was the best of the all the different series for 2017 it had the worst ratios of 2017 there was three one out of sixes meaning that six of the mystery minis per box were duplicates because there's three one out of twelve nine out of the twelve boxes per case of twelve were one out of twelves or one out of sixteens that means you only had three chances to get a one out of 24 one out of 36 or one out of 72 which are like the worst odds of all the mystery minis to date from Funko. Um, the one out of sixes was Snape, Harry, and Ron. Um, have the one out of twelves, which is Hermione, the Hungarian Horntail, and the Thestral. And then I have the one out of twenty-four uh, Dementor, which he's hanging up here in my tree because he doesn't stand up on his own, which is 
He looks really cool, but that's a real design flaw is no matter how. I have the, I think, 1 out of 24 Pidgewigan. I've got the 1 out of 36 Grindylo. I've got the 1 out of 36 Pygmy Puff, which I actually have two of them. So I'm going to paint one purple. I've got the 1 out of 72 Trevor, which is a Barnes & Noble exclusive. And I have the 1 out of 72 Merperson. Um, from my sister, I got the 1 out of 36 Remus. And from my secret Santa, I got the 1 out of 36 Luna. I wasn't able to get Buckbeak, which was the 1 out of 72 Hot Topic exclusive. And the, probably the one I wanted the most, other than the Thestral and the Pygmy Puff. Um, and now, unfortunately, all the scalpers got the Buckbeak. Well, there were some people in the community who were lucky enough to find him in the wild. But the scalpers got a lot of them. So now they're going for $300 on eBay. And I'll probably never ever see one in real life or ever own one. But that's how things go. I'm really excited to see how the next series will be. I hope that they continue with a theme of adding more and more magical creatures per series. Um, I love the design of these mystery minis. They are the same as the Disney and Star Wars. They have the same design style, eyes, paint jobs. They're the same style. I love it. Um, I am a real stickler for design styles, which is why I don't buy the Game of Thrones or Stranger Things mystery minis because they just have an ugly, ugly design. They're kind of warped. They look weird little derpy they are not they're not attractive so I just it's probably good for my wallet but I just stick to the Harry Potter Disney and Star Wars thing but next year in January they're coming out with Lord of the Rings mystery minis and they're the same style as these and they have a Boromir which is my favorite character of all time and I need a Boromir so I'm gonna have to get all of them uh, so yeah, my wallet's already hurting for next year. They're coming out with so many amazing lines already, and it's not even January 1st yet. With Jurassic Park, and all the old school Disney movies, with like Hercules, and Emperor's New Groove, and Aladdin, I just, ah! Then the new Harry Potter, and Game of Thrones, oh, the Game of Thrones ones are amazing. I'm just, I'm so excited. But also, I'm really nervous on how I'm going to be able to afford all these new amazing lines, which, good thing, my birthday's in April. Alright guys, let me know what your favorite pops for this year was. If you had any of the same favorites as I did, if your top tens were similar, um, let me know what ones you think I should have included. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Have an amazing new year, and I'll see you next year. Bye!